the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Why did he use that word? God goes to extreme measures to bring the lost to himself. The greatest gift you will ever give this world is your intimacy with God. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all three inside of me. I've got the power right now. I think what Jesus really wants is people to go. I want to be the answer to Jesus' prayer request. Welcome to the Fuel for the Harvest podcast. When this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, then shall the end come. Hey everyone and welcome to this latest episode of Fuel for the Harvest. This is Nathan and I will be your host for today. And joining me here is Wendell. He's a good friend of mine and uh, so thankful to have you here, man. Hello Nathan, it's my pleasure to be with you today. I thank you so, so much for giving me this opportunity. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's a, it's a joy to have you here. And uh, we are sitting in Wendell's office in his home in Burkina Faso. Uh, Wendell is a missionary here and he's from Haiti, uh, but living here in Burkina Faso. And if you're not sure where Burkina Faso is, it's in West Africa. And uh, God is doing a lot in this country. And I'm just so thankful uh, to be seeing a little bit about what he's doing and also uh, to have Wendell here on the podcast. Um, maybe in a later episode, I'll share uh, some stories of what God has done here over the last few days. But uh, today, my goal is just to hear from Wendell and uh, have him tell his story to all of you um, in hopes that you can hear it um, and maybe it can fuel uh, your ministry as well. So, Wendell, how did you decide to come to Burkina Faso? Thank you so much for the question. Uh, it's a long story. In 2014, uh, the Western Church of Haiti sent we missionaries overseas, Burkina Faso, West Africa, for, for the first time, for a short-term mission trip. I was very blessed to be part of the team. Our responsibility was to teach six courses to the Western churches, which had just been established at that time. We did not only teach, but also preach and evangelize. 35 people give, gave their life to, to Jesus, and by God's grace, we have planted a new church. Three years later, I went to Burkina Faso to see the, the churches. I was very surprised to listen to some testimonies about the benefits of the work the Holy Spirit has done in the life of the people we train. Hmm. I had the, the opportunity also to collaborate with an exceptional Burkina Faso pastor. He was the one who started the, the work in Burkina Faso. He is someone who loved God and loved to serve people. Mm. After three months trip, I returned to, to Haiti to continue my studies while thinking about uh, the idea of coming back to Burkina Faso to serve. Mm. But, I only, but only one year later, I learned, that, uh, I learned a very sad news that uh, the pastor and his wife died in a, a motorcycle accident. Mm. I was really shocked. Yeah. And at that moment, I asked myself the question, isn't it time that I go back to Burkina Faso uh, to serve as a long-term missionary, to mm. continue uh, the work we, we have started? But I didn't know how this would be uh, possible since the Western Church in Haiti did not have this culture of sending missionaries abroad. But by divine providence, the Western Church in Ghana called upon the Asian Church to send the missionary family to Burkina Faso. I was the one chosen, and it took us more than three years to mobilize the Asian churches and partners from everywhere. Mm. Finally, in 2019, my wife Yuli and I arrived in Burkina Faso. At that time, we were only a year into our marriage, and Yuli was pregnant. Uh, our son, Itson, who was born about two months later on the mission field. Mm. Wow. I, what a what a really interesting story. So, uh, the Wesleyan Church in in Haiti they had never sent missionaries before. Yeah, we are the the, the first missionaries. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Uh, that that's such a unique thing, uh, because people who are listening in the United States they're probably thinking, wow, normally we're sending missionaries to Haiti, yeah. and uh, so praise God that the the church there has 
become mature and, and multiplied and grown to the point that now they're sending missionaries from Haiti. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. It's a, it's a privilege for us to, to serve as Haitian missionaries in, in Africa. And it's also a, a good responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it is. A, I, I can only imagine what it feels like uh, to be among the first. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Uh, have you found that to be kind of difficult or exciting or how have you felt about being among the first? Both excited and difficult, you know. Yeah. What, what, what makes you nervous about it? Uh, um, I, can, I can see what people, uh, the expectation. Mm. People have a lot of expectation about uh, what we are doing in Burkina Faso. And sometimes it's very frustrated to you have to, to give update, it's, it's normal. Yeah. Because people pray for you and they support you financially, you have to give report. Yeah. And, but sometimes we, it's, it's really heavy for us to support. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, sometimes the work doesn't go as quickly as you were expecting. Exactly. Or you, do, you don't have the stories to share that you were hoping you would have. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is the real world of missions. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> we're, we're not every story is a happy story and not every story is a, an easy story. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It's true. So uh, in light of that, though, we know that God is working. And so wh what are some things that God has been doing during your ministry? Yeah, God, God is very faithful. Mm. And we work among two different ethnic groups, the Mossi in, in Ouagadougou and the Jula in Bobo Jolasso, uh, the second city. Uh, technically, our work consists of equipping leaders, disciple making, evangelizing, and coaching churches in the vision that God gives them for a transformational impact in their communities. Although the context of our mission is very difficult, we see God's hands on his people. Our lives are being transformed. There is more commitment to serve God, to be involved in the various ministries of the churches, and especially to make disciples. Mm. And I can say we are really blessed to, to see how God is using some of the young people we, we work with in both Ouagadougou in, and Bobo Dulasso. Among them, I think of Salome, a daughter of one of the pastors we, we work with. Salome stayed with us uh, for almost one year when we were in Ouagadougou. We saw in her a, a lot of potentials and we invested in her life. Today, he is, it's a pleasure to see her growing in her relationship with God and she's serving um, in her local church. It's a pleasure for us to... Uh, each time we, we go to, to Wagadogu to, to see her and uh, how God is using her mm. in her local church, yeah. Well, praise God. Yes, praise God. Yeah, he, it's, uh, you know, it, it's interesting how God can use just one person to make such an incredible impact. Absolutely. And uh, maybe I've shared this on the podcast before, but um, I'm always, whenever I'm preaching to a group of people and you know, the, the temptation is always, oh, I want there to be as many people there as possible. Yeah. Uh, but really, God can use just one. Um, and someone wiser than me once encouraged me to think of it like this. Uh, we often think of an avocado as having only one seed, yeah. right? Yeah. But uh, inside that seed is many avocados oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, because it can be planted it grows into a tree it produces avocados those fall to oh, the yeah. ground become trees produce avocados and so uh, the, the impact of the power of just impacting one person with the gospel and how they can impact others and, and so on and so forth all of a sudden it stops being just addition and it becomes spiritual multiplication oh yeah yeah that's why I'm really intentional about discipleship and mentoring people mm. yeah what has uh what has been the biggest joy of discipleship in burkina faso what like what has been like really good about it the biggest joy is to see how people love god mm. and sometimes they just need someone to to be by their side to mm. to guide them to advise them and it's very challenging but 
it's it's a blessing to to be with them and to disciple people in Burkina Faso. Yeah. Absolutely. And you were telling me how uh, you you had a, a bunch of different stories about how local churches and individuals are growing in their maturity of following Jesus, yeah. and things things that may have come in a da- that sorry let me rephrase that things that at one point may have been damaging, like maybe like a teaching about giving or a teaching about how to be generous with other people. Yeah. Um, now their their view is becoming more biblical and in alignment with what Jesus is doing. Absolutely. As a black missionary, I didn't expect some 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 attitude from from uh, people we we work with, and because usually uh, when I was in Haiti, uh, I stay with uh, with a missionary family. Uh, many times we welcome. Uh, missionary group from USA and Canada and many times when 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 they work with with the leaders the pastors uh, usually they have good expectations mm-hmm. but I did that uh, uh, I didn't think that people as I am a black man would have good expectation from for me and but we started to teach them about uh, uh, the importance to involve in ministry and to take care of of the local churches it was so hard to 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 teach uh, this topic but we can see how the holy spirit is working in their life and actually uh, we have people who, who are more aware about uh, the necessity to uh, to give to support the local churches when they have a, a project they are more willing to to give and to support yeah that's that's a very, a very good uh, benefit of yeah. what we are doing, of the Holy Spirit is doing in Burkina Faso. Amen. Yeah. It's something that all Christians have to learn, that at one point uh, people were giving to you, and now it's an expectation yeah. as a follower of Jesus that we become generous as well. Yeah. Um, even even generous to the point of, like, we're, we don't have very much money, but we still give. Um, and that takes a, that's a big step for okay. people with very little to become generous and so it's just evidence of what god is of what god is doing and how he's moving and how he's maturing people oh yeah absolutely um so uh what what other do you have any other kind of testimonies or stories that you could share of like what god has done through you during your time here yes uh about uh two months ago we moved to to the second city and we are working with with a local church a western local church in in bobo Zulasso. and we start working with a youth group and sometimes we we do uh, uh, jesus film program mm-hmm. and we work with with kids it's it's not easy for us to work with with those people but we can we can see step by step how they 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 grow in their faith in maturity and with the youth group, it's sometimes very challenging uh, to, to, to work with them. But we, we praise God that we can see in some, some of them the desire to, to go deeper and to, to know God and to be a leader in the local church. Mm-hmm. That something is, yeah, it's very interesting for us to see. Wow. Yeah. Praise God. He's moving. Yes, he is. And uh, people are growing. They're maturing. Uh, they're learning how to follow Jesus better. Uh, yes. So your work is having a huge impact here. Oh yes, it is. Um, wh- what what would you say to somebody who's interested in like missions, whether globally or to West Africa? Um, what would you say is your best advice for them? Oh yeah. Um, when my wife and I decided to come to serve in Burkina Faso, the country was already in a social economic political and especially security crisis. Being on the ground, we can see the enormous needs of the people. About 20 um, million people are forced to, to leave their villages. About 2 million children are on the street looking for, for something to survive and so mm-hmm. on. Sometimes our hearts tremble with pain. In spite of all this, we are here with a will, will to serve our great King Jesus Christ. I'm telling you all this to say that God needs you to spread the message of the good news all over the world. 
if you feel God's call to go and serve in any place in the world, to support the missionary work, to pray for the mission, to 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 best you can to do is to the best you can do is to obey God. Mm. And for as a pastor, friend of mine used to say, when God gives hard bread, He also gives strength. Thief. Mm. More than ever, the world needs more liberals who love God, who love people, and who are willing to get into the mud to make God's will be known. Only Jesus has the power to transform lives and our communities. To do this, he needs you. Wherever you are, you can make a difference in this generation for the glory of God. Mm. Amen. What a powerful encouragement. Thank you. You Thank can you. make a difference. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can have an impact. Oh yes, it yeah. is possible. It is. And uh, it's what really struck me about what you said early on about like three million people are suffering and have had to flee their villages. Two million children have no parents yeah. or maybe just one parent or something like that. There's a lot of needs in this place. Um, and the... What, what have you seen God do in the midst of those needs? Have you seen God provide? Have you seen God bring more workers? Like, what are you seeing God do in the midst of those really intense needs? Yes. Uh, we can see, sometimes we visit some, some churches in, in Burkina Faso. And in the, uh, in the sermons, we can see how the, the pastors, they are aware about the crisis. Mm. And they challenge uh, the the churches to, to get involved and to do something. And we have some denomination, they build um, orphanages for, for the kids. But the, the needs are, are, are great, and everyone has to, to, to do something to make a difference in the life of, of people. As the government is, is struggling to, uh, yeah, to, to resolve the, the security crisis. Yeah. yeah, and the security crisis you're referring to is if you are living in the U.S. and you look at the travel, the U.S. government travel website, um, Burkina Faso is uh, on the scale of one to four, it's rated four, which means don't travel here because of uh, terrorist activity oh, yeah. and kidnapping. That's what you'll read uh, on the website. Uh, so that's the security crisis you're oh, referring yes, to. Yes, yes. And uh, there's a, what, what is it like to work in a place where just a few miles or a few kilometers from here, there's terrorist activity going on? What's that been like for you and your family? It's very challenging. Mm -hmm. And we are very um, careful about where we, we go mm -hmm. and what we do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but in, in, in Bobozla, so in, in the great cities, uh, there is no problem. You can you can travel and so on. But if you have to to leave the big cities, you have to be very very careful, uh, especially in the north and the south of of the countries. Uh, but you know, actually, my country Haiti is facing uh, a, a a huge uh, social and security crisis as well. Yeah. Uh, but we 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 keep praying for both countries. And in, in Burkina Faso, we can see that the government is mobilizing to, 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 uh, to fight uh, the terrorists. And everyone seems to, to, to be with the government in, hmm. in this battle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one pastor said, slowly, slowly, Burkina Faso is taking back their land uh, from the terrorist organization. Yes, that's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Um, if somebody wanted to connect with you um, or your ministry, what would be the best thing, way for them to do that? Yes, my, uh, my email is uh, wetien, W-E-T-I-E-N-N-E, four, three, three, at gmail.com. Okay, so W-E-T-I-E-N-N-E, four, three, three, at gmail.com. Gmail .com. Okay, perfect. And uh, so feel free to reach out, um, offer some, if you're praying for him or encouraging him, I know he would really appreciate it. And uh, if you have any questions for him, uh, he is an incredibly, you're an incredibly intelligent uh, person, very well educated. And uh, what I love uh, 
about Wendell is that he has so much practical knowledge that goes along with his real world knowledge. Uh, like he's not just having a lot of information in his mind, he's sharing that with people and uh, his love for people is palpable anywhere he goes. Um, the way, he, if you just see him with people, you can see how well he loves people, how well he cares for people. And uh, that's uh, the best part of a, about a missionary oh, yeah. <laughs> um, is, is how, how, how effective you are at connecting with people. So thank you so much for your work. Thank you for uh, advancing God's kingdom in this place. And thanks for joining the podcast. Thank you so, so much. We are very blessed to have you in Burkina Faso. And we thank Forge. We thank all the team. May God keep blessing you for what you are doing. Thank you, God brother. bless you so much. Thank you so much. Well, that's it for this latest episode of Fuel for the Harvest. If you don't mind uh, liking and sharing, we really appreciate it. Otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your day. God bless. <laughs>